Hi, I'm Jay Hager with Oxart Cladding. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little bit about building crack frames. Um, I, every time I post a picture of my, my home wall or really any assortment that I've done, and if these are in the background at all, invariably this is what I get asked questions about. So I want to talk about them a little bit today, uh, talk about why I built them, and why I probably won't build them again, uh, if anything, why I would build variations of them, and uh, why I actually just prefer this, this big old crack right here on the side of my wall. So let's talk crack. Uh, the wall that I normally climb on locally prior to coronavirus was uh, an old 90s wall that's got that concrete uh, exterior on the outside of it. Coming out of the 90s, or even the 80s, 90s, most of your rock walls that existed were trying to recreate the outdoors rather than be their own thing. Uh, like what you see out of walls now, like what, what Waltopia makes. All your modern gyms are just plywood. Uh, these had that this concrete texture on the outside that would degrade very quickly if you put wood screws in it a lot. Holds were never made to be wood screwed on at that point. They were just bolted on and, and the F back when you had inserts and all these, these funky ideas when they're really trying to get the feet underneath them and figure out what, what climbing in the gym looked like. Um, so slowly that rock exterior went away in favor of the walls you see now. But the gym that I climb at still has one of these old rock walls. So we can't screw on any holds, we can't screw on any volumes, and we certainly can't screw on any crack frames. Uh, I mean, it was, it's bad enough that we can't have any holds bigger than this, really. Like, not even this size, because if you can really crank on one side, it's going to spin. Um, and so we're constantly dealing with T-nut issues or whatever, or spinners, because it's just the, kind of the nature of the wall. So uh, we talked about crack climbing a little bit. Uh, at that gym and we just didn't really have an option for it and so I set out to try and design a answer to that a bolt-on crack frame and that's what these are uh, you just there's no screws there's nothing like that you just bolt them on so it's just plywood construction I got the plywood on the back I got a slot here at the top and I've got this big opening here in the bottom um, there's just a two by four that I put a little bit of grit texture on right here and then I've got these bracing frames to keep that two by four in place and how this works is you locate really where you want to go with your crack on the wall. And you bolt it on, get that top one set. Make sure you're not cross threading. It's super easy to do with this one. And then you take your puck. Now the puck is just a dual layer of plywood where the bottom layer has been completely split and it's cut out of the inside of this. It'll, these have all been sanded and smoothed down quite a bit so that this puck will spin inside of there. And it's got this slot that's as wide as this whole thing here. All right, so you take this slot and you find somewhere for it to work. As long as you can get a bolt hole somewhere in this zone, you can line this puck up to where you can utilize that T-nut. That's how it's supposed to work. And then this top slot lets you slide it back and forth and adjust how tight they're gonna be back from here to here. So let's bolt this one on. I'm not gonna climb on this because the truth of the matter is I don't actually, know how to crack climb very well. Battery's gonna die on this guy. So, now I'll take the other one. Same thing. Line it up on the slot. Right here at the top. And then anywhere in the bottom. So I don't actually have one that's going to sit up here. I've got one down at the very bottom of this zone. I'm going to turn my puck to align that slot with the bottom. Like so. And put in my second bolt. And I'm not going to actually climb these, so I'm not going to tighten these all the way down. And so now, now that I've got my bolts in here, I can loosen up this top zone. And I can adjust this in or out. I can bring them all at an angle. Um, depending on where this bottom nut is, this bottom puck, I can adjust the bottom a little bit, but really the adjustability is at the top. Let that drop. Slide it back and forth to get the width of your crack frame. 
Um, so this puck system is actually really cool. I'm really proud of it. I'm not going to lie. When I walked in with this thing to the gym and showed them what I had going on, you know, I was really proud to show them this. I had this answer. And we threw it up on the wall, and it was actually really cool. I was really happy with it. And um, we, we, you know, we crack climbed on it a little bit. The downsides to this thing is that if you just were able to screw it onto the wall, then you wouldn't care about finding the bolt holes. You wouldn't care about having these slots in here to align them. You would just put it on the wall where you want it, like a volume, like any volume. In fact, if you look at Stokes, uh, Stoked, I think, S-T-O-K-E-D, volumes, they have a similar looking setup, uh, but it's all enclosed, and you just screw them on the wall. And now you have this sweet little crack setup without having to find bolt holes and line them up and then find two that match. Now, the way this is set up, I can adjust this thing for a very wide variety of bolt patterns. I, I don't think there's a wall out there where I can't bolt these on, um, unless it's just ridiculous, honestly. Um, so that these are really adjustable, assuming you don't want to screw anything on. But again, with any home wall, any modern gym, you can just screw anything on like you would a regular volume. So you don't care about all the adjustability and bolts uh, that these come with. And that's why I'm probably not going to build another one. Uh, you know, that the other issue with it is that I don't have it completely enclosed. So if we had it on the gym, then people would just climb the outside of the frame because they didn't actually know what crack climbing was. So um, we actually ended up taking it down in there and moving it to like what we call the cave, which uh, is actually a, a, it's a community center. So there's some walls up underneath the bleachers. Well, no climbers actually go back there except for like the hardcore dedicated guys. So we put these up in there and they worked out all right. Uh, but I have them right now because partly because of the coronavirus. Um, and so I was going to put them up on my wall and they just, I just screw, screw on volumes or I can make this. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't have a really a whole lot of use for them right now. Um, just because this wall doesn't have the problems of an old nineties wall. Uh, so the only reason I would really do something like this, honestly, is if you don't want to put wood screws into your, your plywood a lot. If you, if you got something against that, some people do, some people don't want to put a lot of wood screw holes in their plywood. If you can, if you want something like this, they're not hard to make. Um, it's just this, this pattern here, this puck pattern that makes it work. Uh, you do the same thing with a volume. You could take the exterior of a volume off and put this pattern on and put that, put the exterior of that volume back onto this. It's just kind of really complicated at that point. And again, modern walls just allow you to screw into the wall. Uh, actually, just the downfall of this is they're here to answer a problem that largely doesn't exist. Uh, the other issues I have, if you're if you're just going to like screw on crack frames, the, the things I messed up on this is that I just used a 2x4 sitting on top of the plywood for the depth, which is like 4.5 inches. If I were going to do it again, in fact, if I if I keep these and we, we put them back in the gym when it reopens, I'm actually going to put some thin two by or some thin six inch material. Try to get a little more depth out of it. I, I put six inches on it, um, like a plank or something. Try to get a little more depth out of it so it's a little more usable. Because right here at at four and a half, it's not that great. Ideally, I'd like to get eight, which is what this one here is is eight. Um, and I may try and add that eight to here and take it out a bit more. And maybe brace it back out. I haven't decided yet, but it's really too shallow to use at uh, at just four and a half inches. Although it is usable, and we we did use it, but I would make it definitely at least two by six minimum uh, if you were just going to screw it on. And then you just you draw a straight line from the corner up across your two by four, your two by six, your two by eight, whatever you're doing, and then you cut it along that line, rip it down a table saw, and then you screw on your supporting planks. Not that hard. Uh, if you want to do the puck system. Again, you just cut out that big oval there, and you take that, take that whatever you cut out. I just cut these little circles first, pulled them out first, cut the rest of it, and then put them on the back side of this puck. Follow me. Put it on the back side of this puck, so that way when you are putting your washer when you're bolting down the outside of this plank, if you just put it on the top without any of that fill underneath it, this bottom layer, uh, it can suck that wood in and it's gonna slowly warp it over time. 
uh, and, and possibly compromise the structural integrity of the form. So that's why it's important to have this bottom puck down here that'll hold it tight. Uh, I did sand this bottom puck really well so that it's just slightly thinner than the first layer of plywood so that it really holds the whole assembly tight. Uh, and it worked out really well. They held onto the wall really well. I was very pleased with uh, the functionality of the puck design that I wanted, just less pleased with the crack design. And again, for any other, any other setup like that, that you can just screw on the wall, don't worry about this fancy puck design. Just basically build a pair of volumes that have got a six to eight inch flat side on one side, build two of them however long you want, and screw them to the wall directly. It's pretty simple. Let's look at this crack frame real quick before we close the video out. It's really nothing crazy. So we looked at this wall not that long ago when I talked about building your own wall. Um, all I've done is kind of the same thing. I braced up a uh, form on the inside there. This this two by four right here, I braced it up to the ground. So again, the weight's going straight to the ground. And then I put that other piece on the outside of it to give it a little more width for the bottom end of this crack frame to sit on. And then this crack frame just kind of goes up here and I've got a couple of pieces on the back side to uh, to keep them in place, really, um, at that width. I think it's slightly canted wider at the outside to narrower on the front, or wider on the back, narrow at the front, just slightly, not much. Um, and that's probably more a feature of the wood being warped than it is anything. I've got a small piece in the front to keep it, it was flexing in the front too much for me, so I went ahead and screwed up a support piece in the front. And I've got another on the back, and these go all the way to the top. I bolted it into the side of my existing wall frame, and then uh, I was really kind of nervous because the I I had some pieces at the very top. I don't know if you can see them or not. Not really. That yeah, right there, the two by fours along the very top that it's screwed to. Well, those two by fours ran out over on the very far end because I wasn't really planning on a crack frame quite then. So. Uh, the very top of it's not attached to anything. I didn't like that, so I put a two by four across the front, attached to the frame there, and my trusses, and put on these trusses over here. I don't actually trust these trusses very well, so I broke down and put a post in there that ties into the truss at the top, again on the bottom, and then has a two by four underneath it uh, to support that truss, and thus everything on this side of the wall. And then this just goes all the way down to the floor, and I hung my chalk bag on it, and my 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 lead practice rope and all this good stuff. So I've got a little more work to do in this shop. I'm going to wall up that side and put stuff in the corner and put a bottle opener on the post, you know, all kinds of good stuff. But that's my crack frame. It's cool. Maybe I'll learn how to use it one day now that it's here. Um, yeah, so that'll work out real well. I'm excited about it. Um, this wall's getting better all the time. So I'm going to dump this back over here. And uh, hopefully this is kind of giving you a point in the right direction um, for crack climbing or building your crack frame. I've seen people that just have this frame by itself screwed together and hanging somewhere on a rope or leaned up against a tree or whatever. So like this frame by itself, super easy to make if all you want to do is crack climb. Uh, this one is set up for about a hand. Um, I guess you could get a toe in there and cam it a little bit, uh, you know, one day when I know what the hell I'm doing, but, uh, the bottom is just, I can't quite, quite get my palm in there. So there's a little bit of variation in width. I see a lot of people that'll do like four rows of wood and it's a different width every one of them. So they can practice fist or, uh, you know, fist and hand and just hand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some guys are really fancy and they do adjustable. I don't have that. Uh, this is just attached to the wall. I was originally going to put it right down the middle if I did one at all, and I decided I just didn't want that gap right in the middle. Uh, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. And if I ever want to, like, I made it put holes on the side of this, really, and just kind of almost using it as a red too if I wanted. Not not too worried about it. There's a lot of a lot of options to be had. It's your wall. Do what you want to do. So uh, hopefully, that answers a couple of questions. Our main thing was this. A lot of people ask me about these. They're cool. They answer a problem that 95% of climbers don't have and will never have. 
Um, if you don't want to screw stuff to your wall, you want to exclusively use bolt holes, then this is nice. And it, it does prevent you from adding a bunch of extra screw holes to your wall, but you know, the plywood can handle it really. It's, it's made for it. It'll be all right. But if you don't want to, it's all right. Some people don't want to do that and this will work fine. If you have an, if you happen to have an old nineties gym and you have these concrete walls that you're just absolutely stuck with and you can't figure out how to get a crack climbing, climbing flame on, let's try this again. A crack, crack, one more time a crack climbing frame on it, then here's the solution. And it works okay. Uh, you get much longer than this, it gets kind of unwieldy, but you could build, I was originally planning on building about four sets of these and just going all the way up the wall, but I couldn't figure out a way to really make a good cover for it. So there is that. Um, it could be done, it'd just be really complicated and you have to undo it and every time you take the bolts out, it just, it was complicated. So this is the crack, the, the crack climbing frame that everyone asks about. I hope that answers your questions. I hope it gives you a place to start when you're building your own. Um, be safe out there, guys.